Hello everybody. So we have a lot of exciting news to talk about regarding Starship's upcoming and hopefully final test campaign before its expected launch later this summer. Just two days ago, Booster 7 finally came out of the Mega Bay with a full set of 33 Raptor 2s, including a cool looking protection around the engines, and it slowly made its way down toward the launch site. Upon arrival, the booster was placed between the catching arms, and sometime later that evening, we got to witness the first ever lift of a super heavy booster by the catching arms. Up until then, we had only seen the starships being lifted up by the catching arms, but not the boosters, which always required the help of Cranex to be placed onto the launch mount. But finally, the long-awaited moment came, and I have to say, it was worth every minute of my time. And the next day, that is yesterday, rather unexpectedly, we got this Marine Safety Information Bulletin, which says that SpaceX has informed the US Coast Guard that there will be testing at their facility near Boca Chica Beach during the hours of 10 a.m. through 10 p.m. beginning on June 27th through June 30th each day and that a hazard area will exist in the vicinity of the facility, which we can see represented with a yellow square. Hazards such as blast pressure, gaseous leaks and fires could be expected during these tests, which is pretty much a confirmation that Booster 7 could begin its static fire tests as soon as Monday. And these are pretty exciting news because we could be no more than a couple days away from seeing the first static fire carried out by a super heavy booster since the times of Booster 3. Plus, it will also be the first static fire carried out on the launch mount, which will also involve the water deluge system. And I'm really eager to see how much water that system is capable of pumping out. Also at the launch site, both test tanks are still waiting to be stressed out. The super heavy test tank 7.1 has already been strapped to the can crusher, but no tests seem to have been conducted yet. Another really interesting event that the guys at NASA spaceflight were able to capture was the moment when workers at the production site were installing the Starlink dispenser into Ship 25. I think that was really cool to see and I wanted to share with you. Ship 24 keeps receiving some love and also some engines inside of the high bay, but other than that, we don't really know when it could roll out to the launch site again to conduct its very own rounds of testing. I'm assuming both Booster 7 and Ship 24 will remain on the launch site throughout the entire testing campaign so that SpaceX can perform a wet dress rehearsal as soon as both halves of the vehicle have finalized their respective tests. That's just a pure speculation from my side. Further east at Cape Canaveral, SpaceX is showing off how fast they can build things. The first two tower segments of the future launch tower have already been installed with the help of a Liebherr 11350, reminiscent of old Franken Crane which was tasked with building the current launch tower in Boca Chica. This one is also using a power boom configuration with a medium sized jib, which will for sure get a good deal bigger. If you want to get to know this crane inside and out from how big it can get to how much weight it can lift, then feel free to check out my complete guide on both the new SpaceX crane and old Franken crane that I made last year. I'm sure you will like them. Now, I want to draw your attention to a small difference that I noticed with the tower segments for the new launch tower at the Cape compared to those that were installed last year at Starbase, Texas. And the small difference is the piping that has been already pre-installed in at least the first two segments of the new tower and which wasn't present in the segments of the first tower at Starbase. My uneducated guess is that this will save SpaceX not only time but also money and it will also be interesting to see how many more new techniques or improvements these second Starbase will feature. You know, things that SpaceX has learned from building the first base in Boca Chica and which they can now implement in the new base in Florida. Now, finally, I also want to address NASA's fears regarding the building of the new launch site for Starship. Basically, the problem has to do with a potentially devastating explosion of a fully loaded Starship and super heavy booster while being so close to pad 39A. If such an explosion were to happen, 
nobody really knows how destructive it could be. NASA doesn't have experience with the combination of liquid oxygen and liquid methane since it is a fairly new propellant mixture in the rocket industry and that unsettles NASA not only because it could mean that pad 39A could be damaged but also because 39A is the only pad that is fitted to launch SpaceX's Crew Dragon capsule which currently is NASA's only way to send astronauts to the ISS from American soil and the only current alternative would be to resort to the Russian Soyuz capsule. So in response, NASA has said that it will conduct a thorough review of the Starship plans and will assess any risks that might be posed by the launches of the huge rocket. Also, as part of this review, NASA will assess, quote, all options available, including the development of a crew transportation capability at Space Launch Complex number 40 on Cape Canaveral Space Force. So very little to say here from my side. It makes absolute sense that they are worried about losing their only gate for sending astronauts to the ISS from US soil. And I also think it's a great idea that they are considering accommodating Pad 40 to also be able to launch astronauts from there in case something goes terribly bad with Starship. Of course, nobody wants to even think about such a situation, but uh, at the end of the day, we are talking about cutting edge rocket development, and we also should remain realistic about the dangers that this fairly new Starship program poses. Marcus House did a well-researched video about the explosive potential that a fully loaded Starship could have, so in case you don't have enough to worry about, I recommend you go and check it out. And with that, I finished this video. Thank you for being here once again, and I will see you soon. Take care. Bye bye.